Hi folks, uh, welcome to the 50th presentation hosted by Almond Travel, CARP, and tonight's St. Lawrence Cruise Line held every Tuesday at 6.30 Atlantic time. As in the past, this presentation is being recorded and will be on the CARP uh, Travel website shortly after. A bit about us, uh, Almond Travel, official agency for CARP Nova Scotia. We've been in business for almost 19 years. We, our particular specialties are coach tours from local tours, like a tour of Newfoundland and Labrador, to coach tours around the world. We have relationships with a variety of touring companies to find the best option for you. Uh, we've done 130 destination weddings from across Canada, and where that uh, translates into this demographic uh, is that if you have an anniversary or a retirement or some special occasion, and you're planning on taking a group down to destination, we have lots of experience with that and can help you with it. Uh, Caribbean area vacations, because we've done all these destination weddings, we've visited the Caribbean area um, quite often. And whenever we're down there, we visit as many resorts as we can to find out about them. And so we can uh, develop a, an adult only or a family vacation for you down there. Uh, extended family Florida trips. We focus on uh, theme park vacations like Universal Studios, Disney, SeaWorld, and Busch Gardens. We've been to all of these several times. And these parks are so big, folks, that you really want a travel agent helping you to get these organized. Ocean cruises, the most popular itineraries, Hawaii, the Mediterranean, the three Caribbean itineraries, the UK, New Zealand to Australia, and also on most people's bucket list, a cruise in Alaska. And folks, if Alaska is on your bucket list, you want to get it, move it up the list, I think. Glaciers are melting at a phenomenal rate. Uh, we've also done 10 different itineraries on river cruises around the world, including three in Asia, in Vietnam, two itineraries, the Mekong with Cambodia, temples of Angkor Wat, for example, um, as well as the Red River in the north. Uh, we've done cruise tours on the Yangtze, uh, in uh, China, the Nile in Egypt, as well as the Rhine and the Danube uh, and the Rhone in southern France. We've done the Po River in Italy uh, and Portugal's Douro River in Europe. And, and finally, the Mississippi on an old fashioned paddle wheeler in the United States. So lots of experience with river cruises can help you out with that. And that's gonna be particularly important with uh, tonight's presentation. Travel conditions. Omicron is still a factor to be considered for international travel. For most, especially vaccinated people, it's a form of the disease that seems not to be as serious uh, in its effects as earlier versions of COVID. Even the government of Canada is recognizing this as rules for testing to get back home are not as stringent as they once were. Expensive PCR testing is no longer required, being replaced by inexpensive, but maybe somewhat less reliable antigen testing saving a family of four as much as $600 on their trip. Are we heading towards COVID being as recognized as similar to what we would call normal flu pre-COVID? It seems like it, if no new variant comes along. And if so, international travel is gonna come back with a vengeance. Of course, we now have the added significant concern of the Russian-Ukraine conflict into its fifth day at present. The unease generated around the world is enough to cause further pause in travel planning, especially to northern regions of Europe. Let's hope that cooler heads recognize that this is not the avenue towards a, a peaceful settlement and a return to world harmony. One very good sign that travel is starting to return to normal is the fact that travel insurance companies are offering during trip COVID coverage. If you're double vaccinated and contract the disease and need to quarantine at destination, many of your costs to do so will be covered. This quarantine insurance is of very good value and can be added to any policy you may have now as a standalone policy. The other thing that's available through some insurance company is cancel for any reason insurance, which if purchased within the time limits specified, allows the traveler to cancel for any reason. Contact me for more information. In addition, I've recently heard that one of the companies I represent has just added COVID to normal illness ranking meaning that if you contract COVID before you travel and need by doctor's certificate to cancel your trip, that can be done for a full refund, a big step forward. Uh, Almond Travel is the official agency for CARP Nova Scotia. Um, our connection is through Bill Van Gorder, who is the COO and chief policy officer for CARP National, as well as the founding chair for CARP Nova Scotia, in addition to being the senior spokesperson for CARP in the Maritimes. Uh, Bill and I became acquainted back about seven years ago when I was on 
one of uh, his uh, charitable uh, foundations, which he developed with another gentleman. Uh, I served on the board for that and got to know Bill quite well. And as a result, um, Bill booked uh, a scenic river cruise in Europe with us and also did a Rocky Mountaineer train trip um, returning across Canada by via rail. Um, so we, we uh, have quite a connection. As a result of the uh, booking experience, Bill asked us if we would be interested in becoming the official travel agency for CARP Nova Scotia, and I said yes. Um, I'd like to now present uh, Daniel Beals, who is the marketing coordinator for St. Lawrence Cruise Line, who will be introducing us to this lovely boutique family-owned river cruise company that calls Canada home. Daniel, please take over. Thank you so much, Danny. I appreciate it. And thanks to uh, CARP and Almond Travel for reaching out to us to invite me here today for this. So I'm going to keep moving on uh, with our slides. All right, so the cruising comeback. And, and uh, Danny touched on this a little bit uh, earlier. And uh, I'm going to start with it because it is important just to sort of uh, set set the lay of the land of where things are right now. Uh, in Ontario today, actually, uh, um, businesses are no longer to ask for vaccination proof for uh, sit down meals and that kind of thing. And there are no more uh, number limits on bars and restaurants and that kind of thing. So that's a sign of how things are coming along in Ontario. It's a really good sign. You can really tell. Um, with bookings for cruises and just uh, the enthusiasm that travelers have again when they're starting to think about travel. It's, it's really exciting. So um, that's where it is in Ontario. Quebec is about, I would say, in my experience, they tend to be about two weeks behind Ontario. I'm guessing they're going to be reaching this level as well very soon. That should mean by the time the season starts around May for us, um, everything should be well on its way and back to normal. Now we are one of the rare companies that we're able to run in uh, 2020 for only one month in 2020. And in 2021, we ran from July to October. And uh, a lot of the bigger ships weren't allowed to by Transport Canada, at least not in this region. And we had a perfect record for health and safety during that time. A lot of that has to do with the size of our vessel, which you'll see. Uh, it's a smaller ship, and that means that we can really control the health and safety standards on board. And that really allowed us to get through that, that uh, part of the pandemic. However, I think just like uh, Danny indicated, we all hope that starting now, we're entering a period where we hope that this will start to be seen as as nothing more than a flu. And, and maybe every winter we might need a booster or that kind of thing, like people get a flu booster now. Where it all began. So St. Lawrence Cruise Lines was conceived in 1979 uh, by Robert Clark. There's Robert and his wife Myrna on your screen. Now, we always, uh, different than some of these uh, corporate cruise lines, uh, we're very proud that we're a family owned business. Uh, we have a family owned history and still run by the family as uh, Robert's nephew, Jason Clark, uh, is the owner here now. Uh, the first cruise for us was in 1981. We had our 40th anniversary last season and we were very happy we could have it actually September 27th uh, last year. And uh, uh, it's just a great feeling knowing that the company has this kind of longevity and the culture. It also is a huge asset for us because 40 years on the river means that those contacts in that port, uh, relationships with uh, attractions and things like that, we've had 40 year histories with those companies and those different attractions. And that means that we know each other and it's very easy for us to uh, make arrangements with them if need be. The river is our home and really, uh, we have comment cards at the end of each cruise. And 90% of people who travel with us say that the river is the number one attraction that they found during their cruise. That's very significant to us and we try to never forget it, that at the end of the day, as much as cruise lines can be about hospitality and intimacy and, and the amenities and things like that, that at the end of the day, it's viewing the beauty of the rivers that really brings that experience to life. <laughs> and that's really what people are looking for. 
Now I'll tell you a little bit about the different waterways. I've kind of broken it up into sections um, because um, there's sort of subparts to the waterways that I want to pay attention to. Obviously, the first is the St. Lawrence River. We're called St. Lawrence Cruise Lines for a reason. We follow personally the track of the ri river that goes between Kingston, Ontario, where the St. Lawrence uh, Lake Ontario meets the St. Lawrence River to Quebec City. There was a time when we went past Quebec City um, to the Saguenay River, but, but we really uh, kept it in that region. Obviously, it's a huge stretch of river, six nights, seven days for us to cruise from Kingston to Quebec City. And uh, the landscape, it's a long enough uh, stretch of river that the landscape changes. And you can actually see the flora and fauna change between this part of Ontario, Eastern Ontario, and Quebec. Uh, for instance, uh, you would see along the side in Quebec uh, uh, birch trees instead of maple trees and that kind of thing. You can really tell the difference. The other thing I wanted to focus on as far as the waterway is within that stretch of the St. Lawrence River is the, the International Seaway. And sometimes it's overlooked, but what the International Seaway makes up is a series of seven locks between here and Montreal. These are very, very significant. One, because they enable uh, these large tankers and freighters to carry goods into the heart of North America. It's a huge draw for some people who are uh, ship fans and love to watch ships. And also the locks themselves are engineering marvels. Five of the seven are uh, a 50 foot razor drop. And uh, it, it's really significant when you get inside them and you can see uh, the way they, uh, the water is going in or going out and it helps you realize that that really it's 400 feet downhill between here and Montreal, Kingston, here being Kingston. The Thousand Islands, uh, a lot more famous than the International Seaway and people tend to have heard about it, but it, there really is over 1800 islands. It is in our home region. It's uh, generally located between uh, about uh, half an hour drive from here. You'd start to see see all the islands. Uh, we're sort of spoiled here because we consider this our backyard, but it's really a playground and, and significant. The ship, because of our draft and the size of the ship, we can get very close to the islands and really allow our passengers to see them so well. Now the Ottawa River I wanted to include because we do make trips to Ottawa. Uh, we, we start on the Ottawa River around St. Anne de Bellevue, which is just at the edge of the island of Montreal. And it has its own lock called Carry On Lock, which you can see in the, the image. And uh, its own history, really, the history of the Ottawa River has a lot to do with forestry trade, uh, hunting and trapping and that kind of thing. And it's a, it's a much different feel on that river. This is the Canadian Empress. Now our ship, we, this company has one vessel and the, the, this is it. Uh, she is now 40 years old or 41 years old years old, as I sort of indicated earlier. She was originally designed to be uh, imitate, imitate a Victorian steamboat uh, from approximately around 1908. She's changed a little bit since then, although the outside still the profile of the steamboat riverboat is there, but a lot of the inside has been redesigned and the amenities changed to keep up with the times. The other thing we've really done is, is uh, sor sort of try to expand sight lines for exactly the reason why I indicated earlier, which is to give everyone a better view of the river. So, so uh, you can see that's actually a Koto Landing, Quebec, the ship or the uh, image below. And that's uh, sort of to give you an idea of the scale of the vessel. It's 108 feet long. It's 33 feet wide. It's got three decks. The St. Lawrence deck, which is the main deck for uh, staterooms. The Ottawa deck, which has the dining room plus a few staterooms rooms and the sun deck or observation deck, uh, which is where many people spend their days uh, taking in the river. There are also observation decks at the aft, uh, sort of behind the dining room and a forward observation deck. Uh, sometimes those are busy though with uh, uh, our deckhands doing their work, let's say going in and out of locks or docking and locking the ship. This is again to give you a better idea of, of the different levels of the ship with diagrams of the sun deck, you can see how the bulk of the staterooms are on the St. Lawrence deck. Uh, 
Um, just to sort of give you an idea, uh, St. Lawrence Deck are our main rooms. The difference is three and four are a little different. They're called Sterling rooms. They have uh, windows uh, at the stern and at the, at the side. So that makes them a double bank of windows and makes them very popular. Also 24 and 25, if you can see, state rooms are our premier rooms. And those are the only rooms on board that have double beds. So for some people, those are a must have. Generally the rooms on board though tend to have twin beds and I'm gonna show you those in a little bit. The Ottawa deck has the rest of the state rooms. We recommend those rooms specifically to uh, people who might have mobility issues. Um, it's definitely significant for them because uh, the ship doesn't have an elevator. There's 10 steps up from, from the main deck to the dining room. So this is important uh, if you have any mobility issues to be on the Ottawa deck because it's really no stairs involved going to the dining room or going to the gangway. The passenger experience. Now I wanted to show We've recently renovated our dining room and, and really I wanted to sort of show it off here. Um, you'll notice the windows don't have any curtains. They're all, uh, all of our glass is sort of newly tempered. So it's glare resistant. We have blinds now instead of curtains and it's all designed to give you an enhanced view of the river. Um, you can see as you eat your meal, the river will be moving past you at all times. And certainly when we're at port, there's plenty of sun and plenty of view for everyone. These are the, the different state rooms. Now, uh, the one on the top level would be the premier rooms, which is the one with the double bed. You notice that it has a couch there. Um, it's significant to note that, the, that those rooms have portholes instead of windows, and that's due to where they're located on the ship. The bottom left would be our Sterling rooms, and that's with the double bank of windows that you can see. The bottom right would be a typical St. Lawrence or Ottawa deck room, two windows, two twin beds, and a lot of the amenities and things are off to the side where it's tough to see them. Each room has their own vanity in it. Each room also has their own bathroom. I just don't have an image of the bathroom <laughs> right now. Life on the river is all about being relaxed. It's about being enjoying the river, enjoying the fresh air. It's not stuffy. It's not uh, overly regimented. You're in fully encouraged to enjoy yourself at all times. Now, we do have a lot of things going on, though, and I'll get into the, that part of it in a little bit. But, but generally, people enjoy the fresh air and, and just the casual sense of being on the river, the life of living on the river. Obviously, we have entertainment every evening on board, and that, this is sort of an example of uh, an entertainer for, from the last night, uh, uh, because we tend to have a dance on the last evening. And then uh, other favorite activities on board, watching, you know, watching, bird watching, watching the river, watching different vessels on the river. And, uh, you know, for some people also a, a trip to visit the bartender on board is a very important part of their uh, vacation experience. We have four different kinds of our itineraries for our cruises. Um, the two on here are one-way cruises, and that means that uh, people often uh, schedule them as part of a, a longer trip or, or uh, a more involved trip. For instance, if you started in Kingston and went to Ottawa, the ship does not automatically return you to Kingston. So maybe you're flying out of Ottawa or spending a couple days there, or maybe you're taking the train back to Kingston. Those, those, uh, those particular trips, five nights, six days, Canada's capital cruise, that goes from Kingston. It'll go to Montreal and then up the Ottawa River to Ottawa. In reverse, it's, it's the same. It'll go down to Montreal and then over through the Thousand Islands to Kingston. The Canadian Connection Cruise, six nights, seven days from Kingston to Quebec City or Quebec City to Kingston. And this one really uh, uh, retraces the, the original experience of, of uh, the explorers who came to Canada and that uh, you, if you start in Quebec City, you're seeing one of the very first cities uh, founded. You're going upriver uh, through the locks and uh, what what is then rapids where they had to uh, sort of uh, portage their way up river. 
and then uh, in Kingston, which again is one of the oldest cities in Canada. There are, we do have return cruises for those who want or need return cruises. These start in Kingston, that is our home port. And uh, a four night, five day cruise is Kingston to Upper Canada Village and return. Now Upper Canada Village is otherwise known uh, as Morrisburg, Ontario. That's where Upper Canada Village, the attraction is located. Uh, our, we dock actually uh, at the dock that's affiliated with the park itself. So that's why we call it that. And then our signature cruises, and there's three of those during a season, one in the spring, summer, and fall. These are a longer cruise, seven nights, eight days. And the significance of those cruises is that um, because of the longer amount of time, we're able to uh, give them a unique flavor. We're able to make sure that the itinerary is unique. So there'll be events and attractions on those cruises that people don't otherwise get to see on a shorter cruise. Now I should point out uh, for the four night, five day upper river expedition that uh, the, the Thousand Islands is really, you're gonna get a heavy dose of that. So that if that's your uh, number one priority to really see, you're gonna spend about three of those five days extensively in the Thousand Islands, seeing so much of them and seeing all the little nooks and crannies and bays. This is an example of uh, one of our itineraries and I wanted to give, show you the map just so you could get an idea of uh, the length of the river and where we would be going. This is a Canadian Connection cruise, which is uh, between Kingston and Quebec City. Uh, you can see uh, Montreal is almost halfway. It's exactly in the middle. And that's really how the cruise plays out. There are some sights and scenery down below in the attractions like uh, the Captain Madeleine sh Shrine, which is just outside of Trois Rivières. There's a guided tour of Montreal. There's Upper Canada Village, which is uh, where our four night cruises go. And then Fort Wellington in Prescott, Ontario. So there's always so much to see. We tend to have an attraction every day, if not two of them, so that uh, there's always something to see. These attractions are all included with your cruise fare. Now, I was just talking about attractions. Most of them, I would want to point out, most of them are historic in nature. There's lots of museums, there's parks. There's a, they really tend to deal with the, the beauty and history of Canada and of this particular region. Um, so you'll see Fort Wellington, which is in Prescott or Upper Canada Village in Morrisburg. When you're further down uh, Trois Rivières, you'll see the shrine or, or the actual architecture of Montreal and of course Quebec City is renowned for the history and for the culture that's there. There's a, an example of the shrine. Uh, it's actually very famous, a very famous shrine. It's supposed to have uh, uh, been a miracle performed there at one point and I, I'm not a Catholic so but for those who are Catholic uh, it's supposed to be a very significant shrine to Catholics um, based on uh, what it what it had uh, the miracle that occurred there. Uh, there's Fulford Mansion as well. Fulford Mansion is in uh, Brockville, Ontario, and it's an opulent uh, house from the uh, late Victorian era or when, uh, when the Brockville was one of the richest cities in all of Canada, and the Thousand Islands History Museum, which is in Gananoque, Ontario. Now that's the end of my presentation. However, I'm going to sort of uh, maybe urge Daniel to sort of of appear again if, if you're still there Daniel. Um, the two of us can take questions or you could maybe uh, uh, coach me into maybe some points I might have uh, missed or things that you think people might want to know. How do you feel about that? Well uh, that's fine and, and uh, normally what I do at this point uh, Daniel is just to comment on, on some of the things that the presenter has uh, put forward but that also would give uh, you know, people an opportunity to, to jot a few questions down and perhaps present them. And of course, people are very welcome to contact me directly uh, to get information on, on this cruise and the cruise line and anything I can't answer, then I have a direct line to Daniel. So, uh, but I will look at a couple of, uh, couple of things that, uh, that uh, struck me. Um, I, you know, the, 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 the point that you made uh, about uh, have, you know, being in business for 40 years and visiting this similar ports or the same ports allowed you to develop a, a relationship that is so important. Um, 
you know, to, to know that if, if anything, if, if there's a, a hiccup uh, that you can just contact these uh, people, maybe you're running late or, or whatever, and, and you're able to uh, get things organized so that, uh, you know, any problems that might be significant are, are actually smoothed over by your close relationship. So I think that's fantastic. I would actually, just to comment on that, I would actually go as far as to say, in some ways, it's a bit of a competitive advantage for us uh, in that our relationships are so good. For instance, during the pandemic, even though there were restrictions on uh, group sizes and things like that, those relationships allowed us to change all of the group tours exactly to what they needed to be to meet safety standards, to meet health standards. And we were able to do that without a hitch just because of those relationships. That's, that's great. Uh, you know, you and I have spent time, Daniel, uh, getting ready for this presentation. And uh, I know that I was uh, quite impressed by the fact that you did have a number of cruises. And, you know, when, when I, as a travel agent, have been watching what's happening with cruises uh, for the past two years and and seeing you know companies go out and come back with you know 20 or 30 or 40 people testing positive for COVID, uh, it is wonderful to hear that you folks uh, avoided all of that. Um, I think the fact that you're based in Canada with Canadian rules also has gone a long way to uh, to you know helping to keep that as safe as possible. Um, just a, a question: I've I've done a lot of river cruising you know over the years, and uh, you know it's interesting. I I recall uh, Southern France uh, between, um, uh, uh, whoa, uh, Arles and Lyon. You can drive there in five hours, but the cruise takes seven days. Mm -hmm. um, but then I've also done uh, Budapest, Hungary to Amsterdam, which is 1900 kilometers. A very different cruise experiences because the uh, Budapest to Amsterdam, there's a lot of cruising involved and you get to sit on the deck and watch what's going on and so on. Whereas the, uh, the French one, uh, you're there in no time. And so the emphasis is on your excursions. Uh, how much of the typical day is actually spent cruising where people can actually be on the deck and, and enjoy what they're, what they're seeing go past? That, that's a, a really great question. So I would say that uh, we don't cruise in the evening. That's definitely uh, one of the things. I know that some cruise ships cruise in the evening and overnight to make up ground or to get places. Uh, we don't do that. So even though we have a couple of attractions, say one one a day, um, that, that would only be a window of maybe two hours that you're spending with the attraction. Okay. And then the rest of the time is spent cruising. And really that's, as I sort of said about the river is our number one attraction. Uh, yeah. We would be silly to fill the whole things up, the whole thing up with attractions, because at the end of the day, the river is what people are going to remember, yeah. and it's really what gives you that feeling of uh, relaxation and peace, or or whatever different things people feel uh, being at one with nature or being part of it. Uh, we we wouldn't want to take away from that. And you know, river cruises and, and ocean cruises are known for the, the idea of unpack once and enjoy your stay for whatever length of time you're on there. And that's I have an experience that regularly. Uh, it's it's something that's very important. I've done uh, land tours on coaches, and of course, you're up at seven o'clock in the morning with suitcase outside the door, and and you know, <laughs> where where to next sort of thing. So that's very leisurely as well. Um, Excursions off the ship now typically are, you know, do you, do you go by bus or do you, you know, do you dock the, the ship so that people can walk off and, and just sort of walk from the ship or how does that work? It's, it's actually a variety of that, depending on where we are. Um, there are a couple locations where we use a coach to, to take passengers. That would be if you had a longer uh, trip to an attraction, maybe half an hour, we could use Sometimes a, a, a school bus, even if it's a five minute, just so people don't have to walk that distance. And then uh, there are places like Gananoque, Ontario, or Brockville, where the attraction is uh, within easy walking distance of the dock. Okay. Many of our passengers are seniors, are retired people. Not all of them, not everyone moves at the same pace, and it's not our uh, wish to make everyone uh, walk long distances. It, it's it's all of our attractions have that in mind. Um, so 
Um, and in fact, at Upper Canada Village, there's actually a train that comes to where the ship is docked and you can take the train to Upper Canada Village. It's a miniature train. And then there's a, a horse-drawn cart or two that takes passengers through the village. So there are different ways to get to each attraction uh, based on where it is. But the one thing I can guarantee is we always keep in mind that not everyone wants to walk miles to see or kilometers to see things and, and that not everyone is able to. So we try to make everything accessible for everyone that way. That sounds wonderful and, and really quite interesting too. Very, very different. Um, the final comment I wanted to make was, uh, I think I've been to that Notre Dame de Cap. Uh, if, as I recall, that's, uh, that's a church that has like hundreds of crutches uh, uh, hanging from the walls, uh, which uh, demonstrates the, uh, the number of miracles that were done in the church. So yeah, that would be quite interesting to see. So Daniel, thank you very much. I, I really enjoyed this. I, I think you've given a very good um, view of, of the experience that we'll have on the uh, St. Lawrence Cruise Line uh, ship. So thank you very much for your time, helping get ready for the presentation and for doing the presentation itself. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It was good to get to know you. Yeah. And, uh, and thanks for your patience as we got everything uh, ready to go. And thanks to everyone who made it uh, to watch this live. Okay, the uh, next scheduled presentation will be on March the 8th at 6.30 p.m. when Charmaine McDonald, uh, National Account Manager for Canada for Tauk Tours, will tell us about this wonderful touring company which offers high quality vacations, ocean and river cruises plus uh, land tours that include many unusual and unique excursion additions to make for a memorable tour. Sign up at the CARP Travel website, that's carpnovascotia.ca, forward slash carp hyphen travel hyphen webinar. So thanks again, Daniel.